Hello and welcome to another modeling video. This is Alan from the Makoto Man at YouTube with another modeling video. Today we'll be covering the work in progress and finish build of my Gunpla Builders World Cup entry. This is a very big build and has taken a period of nine months on and off with very few projects in between. I have been very fearful that this would not have been successful, so I did not release any pictures or did work in progress videos in the event that it did fail due to backlash from last year's build. Let's have a look at it. My idea was to utilize the absolute maximum amount of space to have a diorama of the bridge of a Magellan class battleship from the original Mobile Suit uh, Gundam series, uh, 3D printed, all catted by myself with a Gundam flying over it. I utilized a clear rod magnetized to the underneath of the cod piece and modified the GPO for Gerber uh, Gundam, swapping the head with a GM and covering all of its excessive panel lines with uh, putty for a fairly smooth finish. This required a lot of sanding and polishing, as well as cutting out other areas and removing seam lines for a fairly pr plain but um, interesting proportioned uh, Gundam. The model was extended and bulked in some areas. With some part swapping and very, very little work in the way of uh, just a lot of sanding and not so much adding and kit bashing, you can make a existing out-of-the-box kit look like something completely different with the correct color compilation as well as just playing around with the detail. And the GM head, which suited this quite well and the removal of detail, going with a yellow-white pearl color scheme with a little bit of gradients was nice. Unfortunately, as a standalone model, it was okay, but it was very, very flat. At a later stage, the model was uh, shadowed quite heavily with uh, black in uh, undercarriage areas to allow the ship itself to be more noticeable. Overall, the gun the model itself could stand on its own. Learnt quite a bit. Tons and tons of uh, airbrushing and shading here and there. Uh, very, very satisfied with the finished result and it just blended in with everything beautifully. Now for the diorama, this is where the bulk and the majority of the work has come from. I downloaded as many pictures of the ship as I could from the anime, model kits, toys, reviews, sketch art, anything I could and measured and sketched it out as many drawings as I can in an engineering oblique manner to replicate in an AutoCAD package. I did have a few pictures where there would be a mobile suit next to it and this would be measured up to a master grade where I could get rough proportions and start giving dimensions to the drawings. A lot of these sketches I started uh, almost a year ago led on to the 2D CAD drawings. I literally spent a good uh, two to four months purely in just drawing. The model had to come in at 50 by 50 by 50 centimeters it had to pull apart and go into many multiple components magnetized to fit in an esky for flight travel and most importantly each component has to be printed on a bed by 10 by 10 centimeters or smaller a lot of these were challenges including uh, color separation and how components would be mounted yet yeah, all of it was all planned out during the drawing stage drawn out extruded and basic details to accommodate for surface treatment of applying putty and sanding back with traditional scratch building methods in detailing the model further AutoCAD was used only because I'm familiar with it and I was able to export everything in STL files and test fit it in the software before anything was printed. After that, over many months of 3D printing, I practically had the printer working around the clock, updating components a day with each component taking anywhere between two to six hours to print, some as little as half an hour, requiring anywhere between five to 30 grams of plastic. Each time they would have a raft that would stick to the build plate 
and extrude up. I used ABS PC, it was expensive, but the resolution was really fine, it was really, really strong. I did fairly thick prints, but the fill wasn't too strong, yet the walls were nice and strong to give it structural integrity. The details did come out quite nicely, but the X or Z axis lines were a issue in sanding out and took a lot of time and made quite a mess. When all the components also came out, each piece was numbered according to how it was numbered in the CAD software in multiple parts, sanded down at the edges, super glue, and they uh, took a component or pretty much displayed its part. To fill it into one piece, Automotive polyester putty was bought and mixed correctly according to the manufacturer's instructions to fill the seam lines. The surface was covered in bog putty, which is similar to polyester, but in um, one mixture to get rid of any texture. This was sanded back with very heavy sandpaper or a very coarse uh, grit and then followed down to finer and finer grit until uh, we primed the surface, looked for imperfections, re-puttied and re-sanded until we had the ideal surface. This was the longest work that needed to be carried out. As these putties were resin based, they were carcinogenic and for many months I would have to wear a respirator and sand and do lots and lots of cleaning. This was not a lot of fun and a lot of it was also wet sanded staining the uh, benches. A project this big is not exactly going to be uh, undertaken for a very long time. Afterwards, once everything was primed in rattle can automotive primer, I utilized textured styrene, different uh, grills and all sorts of materials to scratch build detail throughout the uh, surface and then applied further, pu further putty to neaten everything up until it was primed and gave me quite a nice and interesting looking uh, detailed surface that was interesting once completely assembled. Once done, I constructed a very large cardboard spray booth on the main tables and airbrushed everything in lacquers, including the new SMS uh, Ranger paints which come in uh, large quantities. Uh, I utilized shading and uh, modulation effects to draw the eyes to the bridge and other parts of the ship that would be interesting to look at. Then weathered it with uh, washers and weathering pencils to create a further definition and give it a bit of an anime look. Once all assembled, I was extremely pleased. Further areas to save time from 3D printing, all the uh, turrets, cannons, were utilized from turned aluminium aftermarket sets used for battleships. Once finished by mid-August, the model was packaged and sent to Sydney to be displayed in the Gunpla Builders World Cup Australian Heat. The model did not place, however, something like this has never been done in the competition's history. There has been models displayed in magazines or whatnot displaying components of uh, a warship in Gundam scale of 1144-1100 but not undertaken by drafting and 3D printing purely by styrene sheets and other conventional older fashion methods of scratch building. I did learn a lot. The model has costed me more than $500 to uh, build in purely in materials and taken or undertaken many hundreds of uh, hours of uh, work hours into this build. Pun intended, uh, this is definitely the pinnacle of my work and the flagship of anything that I've uh, done in um, a very long time among my whole modeling career. I've really enjoyed the process, even though at times it did get uh, overwhelming and I burnt out up the in times. More information on 3D printing large components. Repairing broken 3D printing components can be found in some of my videos as well as 3D printing and modeling in general and treating the Z-axis texture. I'm also soon to release a video about airbrushing very large surfaces with a lot of the methods from our honing our airbrush skills video. The rest of the construction is uh, in this uh, video 
and further techniques uh, can be pretty much found in any other tutorial that I've uh, put throughout um, my channel and series. Uh, if you can't locate it, ask and I'm very happy to provide the link. I'm very happy with the finished result. There's a few things I feel I could have done better, but never drawn anything like this before. Never undertaken such a drafting task, sketching task, printing or building thing. I've learned a ton and next time would like to explore SAL printing to save time and go into further detail in my own drafting. I'm pretty interested to see where else I can go with 3D printing as well as general modeling. Thank you very much for watching and as always until uh, next time, uh, next major project will definitely be uh, covered in a video series as previous years but nothing will be as ambitious as, and big as this for a very long time to come. It will probably be a much smaller project as there's other things I'd like to do and felt that I've neglected this whole channel and other things far too much for the sake of this whole project which is only really getting one video. See you guys next time.